six, five, four, three, two, one. Live from the Rob Christensen Radio Network Satellite Studio, it's Jim and Rob over Analyze the Movie. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, home of the best chat on the Internet, the channel, the show that goes beyond the review. Uh, Tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the 2020 Dutch World War II film, The Forgotten Battle. But before we get into that, I think it is time to welcome my co-host with the most, Mr. Jim Chleboyko. How are you doing, sir? Good, good. I want that 1940s hair. I don't think I have enough material for it, though. But uh... <laughs> Neither of us do, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not at all. There's a lot of young hair that went to, went to waste uh, in, in this movie. You know, as a character passes on at the end, no spoiler, because it's a war movie, I was like, but the hair! Anyway. <laughs> that beautiful hair! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wasted on Nazis! Yeah, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> wasted, uh, just a lot, like all, all, like so many beautiful things, Jim, wasted on the youth. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Including yeah, our true. own, right? <laughs> Including some of our viewers. Hi! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I think we've scared all of those poor buggers off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, wh- how, are you, how are you doing, my friend? Great, great. Yeah, I know. Um, I actually, uh, I because I wasn't part of it, it was one of the ones this summer. I uh, tuned into your and Brian's uh, quick review of Free Guy because my wife finally, my wife and I finally watched it uh, last oh. night, and, and uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, pretty much on on the on the nose there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, good, fun, fun movie. Yeah, yeah, light, pleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and easy yeah. had an easy easy. Um, touch about it. It wasn't, wasn't too heavy, you know. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. As opposed to other films, that, including one we might be talking about tonight. Yes. But yeah. before we get into that, Jim, I want to update everyone on the latest uh, for the IATSE contract negotiations. Uh, it was looking, folks, pretty, pretty spooky until uh, uh, tonight. Um uh, even up to yesterday, I was thinking it's like, wow, we're going to have to talk about how we're going to support the strike. <laughs> yeah, uh, but true. that may have been averted. Uh, as we were chatting uh, in the green room beforehand, it looks like uh, uh, the they were able to come to a deal. Uh, looks sounds like something that uh, a deal that they are going to recommend to their membership. Um, you know, uh, but uh, Jim, you had noticed on the Twitter verse that maybe not everyone was happy with it, and uh, that there were there were there were significant compromises. Were you able to dive deep on any of that, or? Maybe not everyone was happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not not so much. I, I was working today, so I had to um, I had to sort of. Um, uh, I just caught something during a break. Uh, mm-hmm. Hold on, let me. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Yeah, you got here. a lot of delay there. Yeah, sorry about there. that. Um, no, I took care of it. I think. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, so uh, I just saw a couple tweets during a while he's grabbing some food really quick, and uh, I, I sent him on your way. But it, it looks like, yeah, it's going to be one of those things where they see how it. You know, there. Ha- yes, there is an agreement. But let's see how it plays out. Uh, so yeah. it's uh, early days yet, I think. Yeah. So I think it would be safe for us to say that, uh, or safer maybe is the right right phrase, Jim. Safer for us to say that, although it's looking good, you know, there is a deal. It still has to be, and everyone watching should realize, it still has to be ratified by the members. Yes. Um, for all the propaganda about union bosses, <laughs> it is the membership that elects those so-called bosses, and it is the membership that's got to ratify the deal. Um, now, that said, usually, uh, especially if the bargaining committee is 100% behind the deal, uh, even with compromise, usually the membership go along. 
you know, mm-hmm. um, and it is a negotiation, so compromise is not shouldn't be like shocking. But uh, you know, did it cross any of those red lines that I think the members, you know, were let's say motivated on and willing to strike over? Then maybe we'll maybe we'll be right back where we were on Friday, going, "Wow, is there going to be an IA strike?" So, mm-hmm. um, but yes, uh, for for those of you out there, that's what we know now. Uh, I do think it, yeah, as you said, Jim, it'll take a couple of days before we really know what's what. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. It, it's interesting. Oh, yeah. Another little feed, a little bit of a hint from uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Rami Malek was the host last night, and Cohen Yang was doing uh, um, a set from the Weekend Update as an Oompa Loompa. Uh, Loompa <laughs> um, you know, based on this this news about the new Willy Wonka movie. But prequel uh and at the very end and he typically does this he gives a little shout out uh he says he said ayatsi you know something like that so uh this is a guy who's previously said save kim's convenience so you know he's got he's got his pulse on the uh his, his finger on the, pulse on of the, the nation <laughs> at least on the twitter nation yes yeah <laughs> you know those active those vocal on social media yes yeah all right uh as opposed to us jim on our online show uh okay well with that out of the way i think i will jump into let's talk about what let's talk about what we're talking about tonight everyone uh so the forgotten battle dutch film uh actually released in 2020 uh had a brief theatrical release in uh in the netherlands and i believe also in belgium it is a international co-production um the uh, here's the log line November 19 no, November 1944 the Netherlands on the flooded island of Walcheren in Zeeland thousands of allies fight the German army and three young lives are inextricably linked a Dutch boy fighting for the Gem- Germans an English glider pilot and a Zealand girl who reluctantly joins the resistance are faced with crucial choices that are not just about their own freedom, Jim, but the freedom of nations. Uh, <laughs> it yes. was directed by... <laughs> that's a long line. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I, I might have... I had to kind of mush a couple up, Jim. Oh. Um, make, a, make a couple of these things work, you know? Uh, but um, anyway, the... Uh, it, it was directed by Matthias van Heiningen Jr., and I hope I pronounced that correctly, written by Paula van der Est, starring Yees Bloom, Jamie Flatters, Susan Ratter, Jan, Jan, sorry, Jan Bevo, and Tom Felton. Uh, definitely a man playing above his age, uh, or I think he was. <laughs> It's kind of hard to tell. (laughs) Uh, As far as the social nutrition checklist, um, yeah, this was one, Jim, I I struggled with a little, uh, a couple of points, and then I was finally, no, no, wait, I I shouldn't be struggling at all. This is pretty clear. But first, on the reframe stamp, uh, the, the star, one of the stars of the show, Susan Ratter, she did not get top billing. If she had gotten top billing, uh, given that the writer and one of the producers of the film, um, uh, Ms. Oh, what was her name again? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Paula Vanderust, uh, mm-hmm. uh, given that she was involved, it potentially could have, but no, <laughs> um, on the union made here, it probably is, but I can't confirm that. So I can only give it a no. You know what I mean? Uh, on the Bechtel test. I I just couldn't do it, Jim. I as far as I'm concerned, it's like it was forever, including one scene where two women, yes, they were talking. They talked about an extra. They couldn't help themselves. To, it was literally ah uh, some some stranger, yeah, but still a man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then of course, last but certainly not least. For a moment there, I was kind of, well, maybe it could. Wait, what? What am I saying? No, 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 no. Uh, not so, uh, not class conscious. So this 
brings in a film that I would give a big fat zero percent to. Uh, <laughs> we need, a, we need a, a foghorn uh, or something like that. Uh, oh, you're effect. right. I do need like a flanger effect on yeah, it. Yeah. I will bring that, <laughs> Jim. I will. I will work on that and see if I can't uh, work Certainly. something out for us for next show. Uh, okay. Was there anything there that you're like? Well, I don't know, Rob. <laughs> If there was, put a pin in it. We'll yeah. get into it later. And that's for everybody. That's for, for you, Jim, and everybody in the chat. Great. Yeah, no, nothing that I uh, I can think of. That, that, the Bechdel, I usually get so submerged into a movie that I, I sort of have to think afterwards about the Bechdel test. I'm like, well, what about that scene? And what about that? I think a good indicator is um, how few women are in the cast. You know, because sometimes there's not even an opportunity, uh, you know, to to have a situation yeah. like that. So, uh, and I, I were there only two women in the in the cast? I mean, the, the that lead, had any kind of real role? Yeah, yeah, like the tune character, the the lead. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, listen, I'm going to stop you there, Jim. Sure. Yeah. yeah. We, we, like I said, we, we'll weeds. put it a bit in it. We'll sure. get into the weeds later. Yeah. <laughs> um. What I will, uh, okay. So from there, let's, uh, yeah, Jim, what's your, give us your, give us your quick review. Sure. Well, um, I was sort of expecting, you know, you, you sometimes approach a, uh, uh, a foreign shot movie or a movie from a smaller country, even though we're broadcasting from Canada. Um, you often approach a movie from a smaller country, maybe with a little bit of condescension, I think. Uh, you know, you think, oh, it's good for this country, or that's a good movie for Hungary, or whatever. Um, so I was just sort of expecting like a, a paint by numbers kind of thing uh, about the war, but I actually found this uh, quite. I mean, it was heavy, um, and I, I think you were alluding to that earlier. But uh, I thought it was quite well done. I, I don't know that it, it broke any new ground, but it seemed to be influenced by this new crop of. Uh, war movies your 1917s and your dunkirks and and uh that uh, even saving private ryan a little bit um uh, you know portraying the horror and the chaos and the cameras tumbling upside down and uh there was a lot of this was a bigger uh and a more accomplished movie than i thought it was going to be often when a war movie comes out it's got a hook like why are we watching this now because they're not probably going to make remake D-Day or Bridge Too Far. In this case, it was you know a forgotten battle, like the overlooked uh, fight in 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 Zealand in 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 Holland, seaside Holland. Um, and I thought they did uh, I thought they did a relatively uh, good job. I'm not an expert on that period, but um, uh, the the thing that I'll give it most credit for, I and we can talk about this, and I and I'm I'm open to to uh, suggestions, but. To me, this is one of the few movies that didn't glorify war. It had a heaviness to it and even, uh, we'll wait to the spoiler zone, but there was no sort of, it wasn't a triumphant, there was no sort of fist in the air shot at the end, right? It, uh, it was pretty sobering and nobody came away without being affected badly. So um, yeah, so I thought it, there was some heft to it i was i was quite impressed actually yeah uh myself uh jim i first of all what's it i think especially as we're canadians um brought broadcasting from canada what's interesting to note is the shell the battle for the shelt estuary a couple of historical notes here which will hopefully give you an idea of why i have the take on this film that i do one of the things about the Schelt estuary was that the a, a number of big shots in Allied command were saying we got to go get that. We're not going to be able to use Antwerp to resupply if we don't if we don't deal with it. And early on, when and you saw that teased in the film at the very beginning when they were evacuating the island, when the Germans were evacuating, and everyone's like, oh. Uh, the Canadians are coming, although I'm not sure they knew it would have been Canadians by then. Mm -hmm. But you, that that idea of, hey, we're done with these assholes who've been occupying us. Um, 
of course, Market Garden, Monty, <laughs> Montgomery, <laughs> I want to say <laughs> Montgomery Burns, uh, <laughs> although in this case was kind of a bastard, said, nope, I'm just going to win the war myself on this disaster of a plan, Market Garden, which they also weave into the story, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons where the Germans were able to resupply, reinforce, and all of a sudden the battle for the Scheldt goes like way later and is way harder, five, six, six weeks of hard fighting foot by foot. And... That is where I, I so I, I kind of understood this context, and all of a sudden we're watching a movie which was, and yeah, the the folks who yes there were British units in the in the Canadian led effort to uh, take uh, clear the Scheldt estuary, um, and there were Polish units actually, you know what. But here, the movie chooses, nope, we're going to talk about the British. <laughs> we'll refer yeah. to Canadians. We will meet a Canuck, which I don't, I thought that a was an Canuck. act. Yeah, a Canuck. Bill. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll meet one later. <laughs> we'll, so, so for that, I was kind of like, oh, okay. And to involve the British and then only as heroes, as long as they're upper class or born of the upper class, you know, <laughs> you're Cockney, you're a, you're a backstabbing peasant. Oh, that's a good uh, point. Yeah. You know, so there was that I did. I, I agree with you on one level, Jim, you know what? They were going for a different tone. It's very reminiscent of saving private Ryan, uh, and films after that. I I don't think it's actually that new. War movies have started to look like this since the 90s, where yeah. it's like literally right down to the color. It's super gray, super flat, no color if they can all avoid it. Even the blood is kind of washed out. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's gory. And and yeah, you're right. Like it's a, uh, a view of what the war is like on the ground. And I yeah. think it could have been so much like if you look at some of these characters, you got the hot dog glider pilot <laughs> who I stopped buying almost immediately because by the end of the war, and this is all in the first act, folks, by the end of the war, there is no, well, I'll check with your father if you can go into battle and I'm just going to win it all myself as a glider pilot. That's it's no, I think that was just like the, the British public were sick of the war and it was all very much a, let's get, let's get this done. Not, um, and you know, favors weren't happening like that. Like, yeah, just no, I didn't buy that character. Um, the young the, guy, the, 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 the young man. Yeah. Uh, played by, Will, uh, Jamie Flatters, Will. I think. yeah, Jamie Flatters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will, I didn't buy him. Didn't find him sympathetic at all. Uh, I, even the other characters where it's like, I, I didn't find them sympathetic. So there's these key moments or we didn't have enough time for me to get to like them, to get over the fact that you got, uh, what was his name? Um, the young man, played by uh, Yves Blom, the, uh, oh, Marius. Yes. Marius. Uh, the, the, the believer who, the Dutch boy who joined the Germans in 1940. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> I didn't believe him. Uh, and I, it's, it, you've got to really make me want to be sympathetic to him. Getting mm -hmm. the weeds on why. I, I like, th they didn't have that time. And even her, the, uh, the young lady, uh, uh, played by, played by Susan Ratter, uh, even her, I'm like, yeah, I don't like you either. Like you, it, for reasons I will elaborate in the spoiler zone, but it, I, these are characters that are getting by, but they're not giving me enough or letting me spend enough time with them to get to know mm. them. I think if, like the hot dog. That is the way you start the movie with the hot dog at the beginning of the war when everyone thinks they can come home for Christmas. Yeah. 
And years later, you go, ah, this is a ma- this is a boy who's become a man, knowing it's all bullshit. You know, that character's been done, could have been done here. I think that's what they were trying to do with this character. Um, but they didn't achieve that, you know? Um, yeah, so I, I do. I think there's problems with this film. I didn't find the character sympathetic enough. We'll get, when we're into the story part of the spoiler zone, I'll get into some of the moments where I'm like, okay, I'm done. That's BS and I'm done. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't feel, I think, what I was supposed to feel. There were a couple of moments later in the film. I think there was something that could have been great here. It mm. just didn't It didn't get there because it's trying to jam too much, it, in a way, too much character development spread off of too many characters in a short time frame in something we know the history of. So it's mm. like, why are they behaving that way now? I could see that early in the war, then cut to middle war, then cut to, but no, they kind of boned themselves talking about this one event that was only a few weeks. So mm-hmm. you're almost kind of like, might as well just give me the raw, raw or focus on one character intimately involved and maybe flashbacks to, to, to kind of show that development, explain why they are the way they are now. Cause that's a, 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 a the thing I didn't buy the three characters that they were behaving properly after several years of war and occupation, you know, war, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for two of them occupation for another. Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy it. So yeah, I got to admit, I got, I wouldn't recommend this film to anyone. Yeah, it was well made. Absolutely, Jim. You're you're 100% right. It's a good-looking film. It was a well-made film. It has three distinct acts. Um, I do think there's a piece, there's a set piece in the at the beginning of the third act, which would have probably been better at the very beginning and then go into the past and build up to that moment. I think that would have been because otherwise that whole third act is like a whole different movie. Mm. You know, you don't even realize until the third act. Oh yeah, there is going to be a battle somewhere. I knew it was in the title, (laughs) you know, (laughs) when was the battle? So, Oh, we forgot to have one. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We should get to that. Okay, pick it up, folks. You know, quick character development. Character development. Yeah. You got to be sympathetic now. You got to realize the error of your ways. Really? Near the end? Are you fucking kidding me? Anyway, so that was my. There's there's my take. Look, we got a split, folks. We have a split decision here. Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. I... I get some of your points too. And I, and I have a whole list of things I was frustrated by and we'll get into those later, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, and don't uh, get me know. wrong. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm more just yeah, trying yeah. to explain myself how, yeah, that key thing for me about feeling so, some sympathy so I could get involved in these characters journeys and mm-hmm. I just couldn't. And once you're out and, and yeah, there was a key moment where I'm like, I'm done, you know, and I'm just, and as hard as I tried, and there were certain moments, which we'll get into, like, yeah, it just doesn't work for me. Mm. But yeah, I'm not, it doesn't work for me. This is what I want to underline. No, no. All no, that no, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I just want to say, you do not have to feel this way, Jim. I get it. Unless you want to. And that's our cue for the I spoiler did. zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixing up my echoes. <laughs> We're getting into the spoiler zone now, folks. Uh, Jib, uh, I think this is one where we can agree on. You know, like yeah, I, the craft of filmmaking, the performances were pretty good. Like the, you know, it looked good for a yeah, a country of 17 million people. They invested well in this film, like as far as the look and feel goes. What mm. what uh, what was one of the highlights for you, Jim, as far as the look and feel of this film went? You know, I, I think there was um, there was a lot of interesting shots. I started to write down some, and then I just you know you can if you do that too much, it takes you out of the movie. But especially in the whole um, uh, when the glider 
yeah, spoiler zone. So when the glider crashes into the swamp and you have that big wreck of a glider, you know, they use that to great effect in this TV series Lost. There's there's nothing quite like a destroyed plane landing on you know on its side. Yeah. That that's that's an arresting image. And and so they're they're emerging from that and sort of way around the fens or the flooded eye of the swamp or or you know the 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 lowlands basically up to their waists in water and 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 there was a couple of really great shots when the german patrol boat goes right by them uh they're sort of just huddling in the in the weeds there just having been missed by the germans and uh mm -hmm. there was there was, uh, there was some really great shots right around there like i thought it was really nicely uh, whoever the director of photography was uh or cinematography um re some really nice shots throughout the whole movie and and i like the that low key you're saying it you know that it's, it's sort of a recent war movie signature yeah that low key lighting not not quite dogma 95 but that the, the sort of the dull interiors and the, the the cloudy exteriors and that sort of thing there was a real there even was a real, when it's sun it's a wan sun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, as they're getting ready to charge the German positions in the, at the start of the third act, maybe, uh, you yeah. know, and yeah. the sun's, the dawn is just sort of breaking and they have sort of a scene which should have begun the, the beginning scene of this movie. Yeah. In yeah, my so. opinion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'll um, make my argument later in the story. Sorry. Some, Continue. some great, some great shots there. And throughout the whole movie, there's a couple images. I just went, Oh, really nice. You know, and, and, uh, uh, and not just beauty for beauty's sake, but you know that that yeah. sort of helped tell the story. That that image of them just huddling in the water, sort of like holding their breath. That was, you know, that was that was quite uh, affecting. I thought. Yeah. So um, that, that was one of the strong points for me. Yeah. Who? What was? Was there any particular performance highlight you wanted to note? Um. You know, it's funny that the guy who played uh, was his name Berghoff. He played the German general yeah. in in that Downfall movie, the one that that, that they had crazy memes about. That's and his right. Name was yes, Bergdorf, I believe. So it was <laughs> it was Klebs and Bergdorf and a couple others. Yeah, that the four generals that Hitler was shouting at uh, in that movie. But um, uh, so he's this is familiar territory for him. Um, did anybody stand out? I mean, they're all. Uh, I like the like the that Jamie Flatters guy. Sort of, I warmed up to not so much the way his character was written, but the performer himself. Um, mm -hmm. I thought he actually, I I I found it a little bit difficult to sort of tell the British got soldiers apart initially, and then they sort of came into their own. Um, the one there was a and then left. Yeah, Literally. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what, Tom Felton, uh, this is one of those roles, and I liken it to, to I don't know if you ever, if you remember Navarone, but as a kid, I watched it. And yes. the uh, spoil, ancient spoil alert, Anthony Quayle s basically destroys his leg sliding down a cliff at one yeah. point. And he gets sent to the hospital, and he's got to deal with gangrene. This is a movie that my mom and kept me up. Scopalamine. And it, <laughs> <laughs> well, the my my drunk. mom kept me uh, kept me up late. Uh, she was a good movie watcher, and um, she kept me up late. It was on PBS one Saturday night when I was seven or eight, and I thought, eh, oh, that's what fantastic! Is, what is Gang Green? <laughs> and then for Christmas, I got. And then a you learn, and you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, it's okay, like an enemy for Christmas. Uh, I got a Guns of Navarone toy set, which is army guys and the the mountain and the cannons at the top and stuff it's just oh pretty sweet pretty awesome but anyway <laughs> um so yeah ever since then it's that injured soldier character that anthony quail that's just like a paperweight around the rest of the story and if it's not based on real guys why would you have somebody that's wounded and immobile like i i, I don't get that option um but anyway that's more about story so yeah no I, and, and that, that's something worth pinning on that mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, for me on the craft, yeah, it's all fine. Like, I mean, it looked good. It was, I do like the fact that they did Matt. Oh, excuse me. 
they managed to restrain themselves from some of the really obvious successes uh, where, you know, you see the, and they could very well have done that with the, oh, for crying out loud, what is the character's name? Damn it. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't care about Tom. I could just call him the officer. The injured guy. <laughs> just bear with me, folks. What the? Oh, is Troy? No. Oh, and now here's this is going to be awful. Uh, Toynja. So Toyn. I think they're always calling Toyn, her Toyn. Yeah, yeah. Toyn. Uh, so Toyn's character, and they could have done this because she is the daughter of a middle class doctor. Allegedly earning a pittance, a pittance, uh, but they could have done it and they didn't. They didn't go all out with a very super slick 40s thing. She looked like the middle class daughter of a, you know, a, a rural community, you know, like it felt real. It felt like it didn't, they didn't go too far with her hairstyle. They didn't go too far with her look uh -huh. to be like out of, well, no one was looking that good at the end of the forties, Yeah, you know, a yeah. uh, little harder to do with the actual actors themselves who, again, it's our end of the forties near the end of the war. Everyone would have been hungry. Everyone mm. would have been slim, <laughs> you know, the, even the British soldiers, like, I mean, and uh, you know what? I, I get a, a fine strapping lad uh, that Jamie Flatters is. He's almost like, wow, he, Maybe he was spoiled by his dad because yeah. he doesn't look, he doesn't look like war rationing touched his, you know, no. his plate ever, you know? Um, no, no. But no, I, I, I appreciated that. I appreciated the, um, the set design, the way that they were actually able to, you know, because of course they can't have these big, huge, American or, you know, let's say Russian set pieces with, oh, well, we'll just make the army go there, you know, and yeah. <laughs> there's your yeah. thousands of extras, right? They didn't have that, but I didn't feel too cramped, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that they were walking in these abandoned fields, which is what happens in war, you know, the, yeah. like, uh, so I, I appreciated that. I thought the, you know, and I did think the performances were, we're fine. I, in in part, I just like the characters because I was like, "Yeah, you really are an idiot, aren't you?" <laughs> you know. Oh, um, so many times. There were yeah. story parts to it that I was like, "Well, that we'll talk about in the story." Sure. But I, at no time did I think the actors weren't trying to work with what they had. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, that I that I was buying. You know, yeah, even yeah. when I thought the, the emotion was inappropriate, I was like, well, no, that's direction. You know, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. could see there was a vision there. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, I should also say something about, you know, and another similar thing that these move these recent war movies have. It's, I was thinking about this last night, but it's funny. It's that constant presence of, of music, uh, the, the background, that kind of, it's almost like the you know the last yeah. fifteen minutes of any Law and Order has that 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 two or three notes on the synthesizer, <laughs> yeah, like a, that kind of I don't know, yeah. existential drone there that that's in behind everything. It yeah. may not call itself out, but similar to Dunkirk, similar to a lot of these other movies, and that this that was present it sets the table in this one as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but and it's funny too because old movies used to have constant music, like we're talking fifties, forties, and fifties movies. But it was super intrusive, you know. And we've gotten ba back to a, a time I think where a lot of these movies do have constant music in them, but it's not as obtrusive. I don't think it yeah. just sort of hovers in the background. So that's sort of a one of those. That's a kind great of note. That's a fantastic note. Jeff. Well, if you watch, I remember watching Grace Kelly and the country girl, which she won a, an Oscar for. And the whole thing is the music telling you how you should feel like the whole scene that they showed on the Oscars. And I just thought, Oh God, can you get a no music uh, cut of that movie? But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Very, but a, a time when the film industry was still 
you know, musicals were such a big part of it at yes. the time, which, yeah. and that's exactly a musical thing. Mm -hmm. All right. When there's too much emotion for words, we'll break into song. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, okay, Jim, I'm going to, let's quickly, uh, you know what we haven't done? We have not mm. welcomed the best chat on the internet. Yes, we've right. shouted them out or we've at least said something about them, but we haven't welcomed sure. them. So why don't we quickly welcome the folks? Of course, first we've got our man, our man, our man who I'm incredibly jealous of. He, uh, he, uh, was letting us know about the success of his channel, uh, Vlad 65, <laughs> Uh, fantastic. But you know what? Bravo, Walt. And welcome. Welcome back to the show. Um, yes. of course, our man in Nevada, uh, <laughs> Brian, the dragon movie guy. Good to, uh, <laughs> good, good to see you. Uh, sorry about your Seahawks. Um, the, the biggest Seahawks fan in Reno. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna, <laughs> it's not Reno. I know. We've got uh Catherine Johansson. Uh yes. you know, uh, uh guest guest co-host uh, a, co a couple of times over the last couple of months and mm -hmm. uh giving us reminding us about Passchendaele. I forgot about that film. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh that could have been another one uh upcoming, but we've already making our call. We've already made our call. It is another film with Paul Gross. Um who else who else am I missing here? Uh, I think that's uh, I think that's about for it now, for now. Yeah. That's who we've got. Fantastic. Um, the uh, and uh, <laughs> yes, you're very welcome, sir. Uh, you know what? And it is. It's a fantastic, folks. You should, even though he's got way more of the subscribers than us, you should go subscribe anyway if you haven't already. Great, uh, great channel. Same with uh, Dragon Movie Guy. Uh, both have uh, and and the great part about uh our why one one of the reasons why our chat is one of the best on the internet different views coming from different angles uh you subscribe to those two channels you are not gonna get any overlap unlike so many other movie review uh folks um what mm -hmm. else uh, another thing i want to do uh which I, I keep forgetting to do which is maybe why we don't have the subscribers walt does <laughs> Folks, oh, if you can, yes. if you got some time, please, please, uh, you know, please give us a like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe subscribe. Let's not forget to ringy ding that bell. And uh, that may not be the last time I uh, I do that. Uh, I do want to. I forgot to mention it earlier. I was kind of getting on a bit of a steam, but. Another thing, uh, and this is relevant specifically to Canadian history, Canadian World War, War, War history, because of the, like, for a small country like Canada, especially at the time, uh, massive casualties, uh, thousands dead, the number on the... Uh, the number on the, uh, at the end of the movie is only talking about a certain chunk of the yeah. whole campaign, that whole campaign. It was one of the, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back and triggered the 1944 conscription crisis in Canada. Because, uh, folks, for those of you who don't know, up to this point, Canada would only send volunteers overseas. Um, had to be a volunteer. So what was happening is by the time they got to the Scheldt, the guys who had landed in Normandy hadn't had a break. You know, the Americans, the British, uh, they were able to rotate troops out, you know, put fresh troops in, bring the other, let them rest, let them. So by the time a lot of them got there, shell shock, battle fatigue, PTSD was really starting to sink in and uh, the effectiveness of the troops was starting to really drop and because they weren't getting any relief, they weren't getting any replacement soldiers. So the unit would just shrink, but it wouldn't get when, you know, it just, it would, well, you still have the same jobs, you know, but there's three less, less of us. Yeah. Advance, yeah. advance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shut up. You advanced. <laughs> well, and that's the thing about troops that uh, they do reach a point where they're like, well, what's the point? 
yeah, I'll get there when I get there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, what I don't are you know. Do this, kill me. This hole looks pretty good. <laughs> exactly. I'm fine in this hole. Yeah. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> Tell us when you've made it safe. But I, I think that was fascinating. Another fascinating thing about this um, that was definitely not going to be touched on about this film. Uh, all right, let's move on, Jim. Let's move on to my favorite part, at least of this, uh, talking about sure. uh, this film, and that is the story. But I want to hear, uh, I want. oh, actually, let me make my pitch. Let me make my pitch now. I okay. think one of the things that could have helped this movie at least move the needle a bit to better. Uh, mm. Not necessarily that I would still like it because I'm talking about characterizations and everything, but there is a set piece. We're well in the spoiler zone, so didn't see it. Guess what? You're going to learn something about the film. At the beginning of the third act is the assault on the causeway, which is also another controversial thing in the actual history of this battle, but there's the assault on the causeway from the mainland, I guess, uh, or like one side of the Shelt estuary to this Vulturan island. And it is, uh, it's uh, like so many things where you're rushing into machine guns, a bit of a disaster. Um, <laughs> it's also when our, uh, our, one of our heroes, uh, the Jamie Flatters will, his character, the Jamie Flatters character, the uh, Brit, he is, by this point, he's getting exhausted and he's learning what real battle is like. And he has, he like a lot of stuff has been stripped away from his character by this point. Um, and then they end up retreating and, you know, other things happen. I think if they had had that battle... Even a, like a good lead up to it, maybe the retreat's called, then we cut to the beginning. We see the, the uh, Flatters uh, playing Willie as the callow youth who doesn't know shit about war. Then all of a sudden we're kind of, it's all of a sudden it becomes a, a, a different story without actually changing much. Um, then we're like, well, how did, and what's going on here? And how, uh, then we get to see what, how he developed into the guy we saw at that disastrous battle. And we get a bit of a catharsis, a bit of relief when it does work out because it does work out. They did take over Welshron. They did open the Schelt estuary. Bill for those lives. Who for, yeah, for yeah, Bill and will live. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Allies did win World War II. <laughs> you know, it all it all worked out in the end. But I think that could have been a would have helped this movie. It also means so it's like, yeah, we're gonna talk mostly about Bill, which would have been hard for a Dutch film. <laughs> um yeah. you know. Um but even there, like they're not even talking about the resistance that much. You know, we don't, or it could have been about how did um, Marius, uh, how did he become, you know, give us more. We get a little bit of that taste. You know, there he is on the Eastern Front, four years of war already under his belt. Um, you know, that we could have had something to show how he. How the fuck did he get there? We're yeah. told it. Um, you know, that he still believes, kind of, in 1944, it's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, that at the end, it's only when he gets back home that he's like, oh my goodness, they're torturing people here, Jim. <laughs> did you? I can't believe this. Four years on the Eastern Front. Any Any thoughts that the Wehrmacht wasn't committing actively engaged in atrocities uh, in the in the East has been blown up by now. Mm -hmm. This character would have actively participated in that, that he's like, it's like, oh, I, I'm seeing a whole other side of the war now. It was like, come on. Um, yeah, there's these things that I think are a problem with the story. Even the young woman... Um, even uh, Toyn, uh, her character, like it's, 
I could, th- there's something that could have been really good there, but it's like, I, I, I was even excited with the fact that, yeah, her brother and even her friends had kept her out of it because they're like, well, you're not necessarily a collaborator, but you're certainly not. It's just better you don't know. We don't trust you. You know, and they could have really done something with that. And in the end, and and we even see some of the why when there's that moment with her, Jim, where she's like, I don't care about those guys. And it's like, wow, you live in a small town, you know? Like, look, I... um, and even, uh, so we talked about Maria, so we talked a bit about Bill. Bill, who's doing like a Top Gun BS hot dog thing in a glider that has to have two people fly it. Why? Because it's so physically difficult because it's pulleys and shit. There's no yeah. hydraulics. There's no, it's rope, wood, <laughs> cables. That's what flies that thing. That's why you've got two people. And there he is. We'll roll like it's an aerobatic thing. And then obviously only to set up that they had to roll it. When it's already lost a wing, there's no rolling with that. No. There's falling out of the sky with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that true. was the moment where I was out. I'm like, that is such a bullshit moment. I don't believe any of this. I don't like the character already. Because I don't believe that this character re- exists in Great Britain in 1944. You know what? If his dad was keeping him out of the war, he would have been kept out well. Would have been an officer. Because what's a sergeant? Give me a break. <laughs> he's yeah. he's a member of the ruling class. You know, like even the even the other commander going, well, you have to get your dad's permission, which I'm not going to look into. You know, it just, everything about his character setup, I didn't buy, but, and also was unsympathetic. Mm. Uh, Marius, I'm not, they don't even give me a reason. They do not give me any time to get to like Marius, any time to understand why he joined the Germans, you know, other than what, to leave a shitty farm, you know, like... It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and then even the young lady where it's like, even her, it, it uh, you know, this is not the character that at the end goes, I'll take the thing. Not the young woman, her friend, Hannah, right? Was uh, Hannah? Simo- no. Was it Simone? No, it wasn't it be- Simone. I, I might be. Uh, confusing the actress name, but anyway, go ahead. I'll look for it. I'll um, look it up. Oh God, Yana, it's Yana, Yana, played by Marta Schneider. Okay, so even her funny. character, so she suddenly at the end gets a little chicken. She has been actively in the resistance, passing information, being involved, having friends who can hide people for years. She folds, but the one who has always just gone along, that's the person who steps up. Give me a break. I just, yeah, this, this is the thing. It's almost like, oh, and now we need to make her somewhat sympathetic because mm. yeah, we, we've got a person who's more than willing to let four young men die because they're ding dong brother and no, her, her, even one of her closest friends doesn't trust her. Yeah. She does, you know, well, my dad works for, he's, you know, he uses all that weasel language to cover the fact that it's like, well, we kind of like our comfortable middle-class life here. I'm sorry, the pittance, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Well, I was wondering that, or even if it's just, it's, it's better to have, uh, fewer, uh, fewer people in the know. Uh, you know, and also this is a, this is a family that had lost its mom which is another point I want to bring up in a sec. Lost its mom, had the dad, (laughs) the brother was already sort of working in the, the 17-year-old was working in the resistance. And so maybe it was sort of, you know, protecting, you know, the remaining part of the family that uh, maybe wouldn't die. (laughs) I'm not exactly sure, but in terms of not having a mom, like in terms of the Bechtel, uh, the Bechtel test as well, they couldn't even have a mum. They couldn't even, like, again, this is a fictional, 
these are fictional characters and not based on anybody. It's not a documentary. And, and it's just like, mm, can we afford one more character? Maybe a woman? Uh, no. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Or um, even just a moment of her talking to the mayor's wife. Because remember, there's a moment where she's got to go to help the mayor's wife to get away. And she doesn't. She just goes straight home and yeah, worried about Dirk. Um, Vlad brought up a great moment that's exactly it. So there's Dirk just openly taking pictures. Mm. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I agree with I agree with Walt here. I'm not buying that. You know, it's also well, like talk about a heat score. It's like. Okay, we're gonna take you and your camera and go to your house and see what else you've been taking pictures of. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, the fact it's that probably he was, a jailing offense to own a camera at the time. You, you know? want to keep as low a profile, you know, considering his activities and the people he was associating with. You want to keep as low a profile as possible. Yeah. They're also probably not going to want to recruit a hothead. You know, he had red hair, but uh, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, they, they're. <laughs> You know, they're probably not going to want to recruit somebody that's just does stuff off the cuff. Right. Like, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he thought that it would lead to the death of three German soldiers, but these are not happy. You know, you don't poke the the uh, the retreating bear, <laughs> you know, like the, this is a nasty group of guys. And and almost in every case, the the, the some of the main characters underestimate how nasty they are uh even the uh, Mar marinus he after goes after years, years of occupation he goes to meet the girl probably you know it, it, in, in the broad middle, daylight in broad daylight and of course it's that all-knowing all-seeing gestapo guy comes around the corner in his convertible and is looking right at like not he's not reading a briefing book or not <laughs> he's just looking at him you know he's got the power he knew it would happen um yeah. That happens there. And even at the end, when Chun looks out the window and she's she's up against the window watching the troops yeah. leave, and 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 the one guy said, Oh, I didn't forget about you, you know, and it comes yeah. with his gun and 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 like it's time after time that these guys yeah. do this stuff, and it's like they almost have no uh survival instincts again after four years of this. Yeah. Well, and even some of the other choices they made, let's talk about the, the British choices. Um, yeah, they'd be like, sorry, officer, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drag you to the edge of a town, try and get you as close to a German as we can. They're all in uniform. They were shooting prisoners. That He'd get health care. Like, they would be like, we'll, we'll leave him as close as we can. We'll We'll leave him with this local... Uh, he can tell the Germans, look, I, there's this guy, you know, and then we'll fuck off because he's dead weight. Yeah. You know, the whole idea of turning ourselves, in, oh, well, by this, we'll be dead in two days. They're not spies. They're not, you know, like, no, I, uh, I don't think the British was thinking like that at all. Um, you know, because they weren't. They were regularly, these guys who fell from the sky, they're like, ooh. Information, you yeah, know, yeah. information and, you know, much as, yeah, it like if we hear some of the horrors, that was when it was getting like in desperate battles, like the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, when Canadians, Americans, British were known to, well, what do you mean you don't have any prisoners? Well, yeah. I, I did what you told me to do is make sure we didn't have any. I fixed you know. the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know well, what? I, you know what? We're, we're getting shit on for that now. So I'm going to have to investigate you. <laughs> but, but there, I mean, it, it, there were, depending on who the leadership of any given uh, group of soldiers was, there were incidents of, of, you know, Canadians being executed, for instance. Well, uh, absolutely. Uh, you that, know, that's exactly uniform. it. So, yeah, that's so. exactly it. But yeah. they weren't, thinking that the it hadn't been going on that long it hadn't gotten totally desperate for the germans uh, yeah no instances but not oh we'll be dead in two days no they would have ditched the dead weight mm -hmm. been like we gotta let you go 
now we're all gonna fucking die if we keep you you know from a story standpoint why why would you want a character that's oh immovable yeah. heavy uh slows down the story uh you know and it's not a great role for tom felton because he's got or maybe it is maybe that's the kind of like i just want to sit around for a few days yeah <laughs> five days good i i got a i got My a other day. actors can literally carry me yeah yeah i'm in i mean just superimpose my face on some dummy and uh no but i mean so you you do have this care well the the for western well for western that's stupid for uh english speaking uh audiences the most recognizable star uh and you pretty much destroy his leg and and he's got to be sort of uh carried around for the rest of the movie but uh and he it's not like i mean he offers some leadership but it's not crucial to, to the other gentlemen. And he's certainly yeah. not got any pull off those slimy cockney bastards that hoard the food for themselves. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'll get to them, but let's go back to your thing. Yeah, why would you? Like, I mean, a great thing about that character is it's another obstacle for our hero or our little, our merry band to deal with. Mm. It slows them down. All of a sudden, they're like, they had moves. This narrows their moves. So I get why a writer would cripple one of the characters mm -hmm. to slow everyone down or to force these moral choices on them. I don't think it was used effectively here. No, no. You know, and sometimes that, that sense of being stalled, sometimes it, you know, in real life too, it helps, you know, that delay you know, all the action leaves and then you're yeah. left behind and you can deal with whatever. So yeah, I, yeah. I kind of get, I kind of get that, but just from a mechanics point of view, it's interesting to think about, I think. Yeah. I, I, but it, like, it's also, we don't think about the mechanics if it's used effectively. Mm -hmm. We're thinking about the mechanics now. Cause it's like the dead weight insists, no, you'll continue to carry me and carry out my orders yes yeah. <laughs> which involves carrying me <laughs> you know, we like... leave at dawn <laughs> and then you you mentioned it earlier jim this is one of the reasons why i was like the almost yeah offensive class divide on the british team um where the uh the uh What's it? It's the, uh, the, yeah, the oh yeah, the guys. Cockney characters, the working class characters, are the ones who are just forever whining and want to f off. You know that they're just like I, you know, and it's like I don't, I. Now again, there could have been a great movie focused totally on this little group, a la Saving Private Ryan, whereas where Saving Private Ryan was mostly about. Well, we've got this great leader, and we're just going to follow him because we trust him. We're we're gonna we're 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 in it, even though we don't like it, and they argue about it. And that they never challenge, like they they're like, well, but this is what we got to do. Um, you could have had the, a similar story where they all fall apart and fall on each other, and then somebody leaves, and then we find out their demise, or maybe they get through. You know, like. I'm thinking of Save it, Saving Private Ryan and how the character, the the coward, makes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he's one of the few that survives mm -hmm. out of it. Like, well, actually, he was the only. I think the only one of the original, like of uh, of the troop of the squad going out for him, who made it, mm -hmm. and one of the few that made it at all in that last battle. Yeah, you know, yeah. and. Um, so that could have been a really good kind of pressure cooker character story, you know, and even then like the, you know, and then you could have played with the trope of, you know, as they interact with Zealanders, you know, some are like immediately selling them out because I am not saying there weren't collaborators. There fucking were, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not saying that a lot weren't kind of more like the, the town doctor where it's like, well, you know, I, just getting along, figuring yeah. they can work with these people, mm -hmm. you know, although even that guy was like, 
No, even he should have been by the end, after years of occupation, you know, kind of went, well, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah, 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 no. Like, <laughs> where the I, daughters are like, yeah, he's, he's pulling one over on your dad. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> yeah. Or what did she say? Yeah. He's play. Let's go, Dad. He's playing games with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and even that, like, I there's no playing games. He just he wants what he wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but even that didn't get exploited properly. There is a part of me who's like, I bet you that kind of deal happened a lot. They're like, well, we kind of need the town doctor. I do like my legs staying on my body. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. We'll ship him off. Yeah. You know, yeah. But near the end, it would have been. Now we're fucking shooting him. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you're gonna save my leg, or I'm gonna shoot your daughter. You know, or whatever. You know, like. But yeah, that yeah, some of some of the story just doesn't hold up, and I think the reason I dislike it so, whereas I I can totally see how somebody would like it, is I got taken out of the movie early enough that I see all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it just adds to why I don't like it. And yeah. again, I don't like these characters. Marius, uh, or no, Toyn got a re- got redeemed and saved, and she didn't deserve it. Unearned. You know what? Whereas poor Yana, Will, another guy who f- gets to survive, he's, he couldn't even, he didn't even have the decency to never mind comfort her, just maintain eye contact while she died. Nope. Yeah. I'm going to look away. So yeah. that poor young woman who, you know, now That's that may have been part of the commentary on, and who knows, maybe this is what uh, Matthias was going for, the director is going for. No, I'm going to make sure all the people who nobody's going to like are going to do all right. But I don't. That it's the Cockney guys who are the the rats. It's the, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, no, he he falls into enough of these. Let's say negative tropes, that I'm I'm not willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of ambition here in this film, a lot of ambition in the story, but I don't think it really came out the way mm-hmm. it could have. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, our, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Go, yeah. No, if you want to check with the audience, that's uh, the audience. Yeah, it was like, yeah, we got a lot of, we do, we do, we have a lot of, a lot of people chatting, a lot of people chatting. Uh, Catherine uh, did uh, came and mentioned uh, about talking about other films because there's a bit of chat in the, uh, in uh, but talking about other movies that, you know, uh, other Canadian World War II movies or world uh, movies telling the Canadian World War II story. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are, you know, yeah, we don't, yeah, DMG, as, uh, Walt said, we don't have any big World War II movies, although were there's some great, there's an awesome one that's all set in Canada, although it follows the Germans, of course, uh, which is actually based on a true story of these Germans, uh, and one who actually made it out was in a POW camp basically escaped across Canada, got into the States. The United States wasn't a combatant yet. So was, you know, no. got to his own embassy, was shipped back. Uh, you know, it was, uh, but it was a good movie, black what and white. What? I can't remember what it was called, but. Oh, you're killing me. Yeah. I, well, that's Walt's job. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd I will. That. I, but it is, it's a good, it's an exciting movie. Uh, but, as Walt says, yeah, uh, Juno Beach, which is going to be cheap. There was, there's been a couple of movies, or at least one, I'm sure, on Dieppe. I that think disaster. so. That disaster. Um, but uh, yeah, big budget, Passchendaele, as Catherine said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, oh, yes, Walt. That's right. This was another character I didn't buy. There's one of our ostensible heroes, the guy, you know, the Dutch boy who joined the Germans, um, joined the Nazis. And then all of a sudden, 
there's Lieutenant Dan rolling up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to lay some truth on the boy who hasn't figured this out by then and is able to do it without anyone. I mean, yeah, they were they were shooting defeatists then. Yeah. By then regularly. Yeah, that German would have been what? You know, I'm sure there would have been code, like almost like coded phrases about the war where you could find out. He doesn't do that. He just says... And sure, maybe it's because he doesn't have any legs and he's totally cynical now and he thinks it's all a disaster anyway, but uh, yeah, no. Like, it's almost like they needed, oh, how do we clue this kid in to what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. Well, we use Professor. And then it's like, you know he's going to kill himself. And there's, oh, there he is. This is where he's going to off himself and he kills himself. Yeah. Because yeah. he has served his character purpose. We're yeah. done with them in the story now. We don't let's tie up this loose end right away. <laughs> well, at the same time, he he didn't seem like I don't think he would have been cautious because he seemed so broken. It, it, it's, I think one of the things about this is that a lot of the people were just maybe they weren't even just stupid; they were just broken. <laughs> like there, it's that hyper awareness maybe just breaking down. I mean, I'm reading; I'm giving that the benefit of the doubt. You're but, giving uh, him a huge benefit yeah. of the doubt because yeah. definitely not what it breaking. He would have talked, and then, hey, where'd Le where'd Lieutenant Dan go? Where'd Lieutenant Dan go? Oh, yeah. he was shot this morning. A uh, defeatist talk. Yes, you know? yeah. <laughs> like they're shooting defeatists <clears throat> in Berlin. With the Russians a block away. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, they were just insane they were, by the time. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but um, there, here's a comment on, on the film from Vlad. Uh, no real payoff. Nothing really happens when they finally encounter each other. Absolutely. The promise yeah, of the premise is not kept. Mm -hmm. There is no magic, like where it's all conflict and then they're all three dead or they all kind of are part of saving everyone. And no, together. it's just. Yeah. They see each other. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> cool. like, hey, yo. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Billy or, or Will has no clue who Toyn is like, you know, yeah. He, he doesn't really even know who Marius is. It's just a guy and. They have a moment where, you know, but that I was interesting. A lot of moments like that. Uh, oh know. yeah, that's right too. Yeah. Oh yeah, because they encounter each other in the grass. But the um, the the interesting thing is, Toyn sort of sheepishly walks away uh, once Marinus has yeah. died in the chair, and and she sort of she hunches her shoulders and then walks away uh, when Will had seen her with him, and and that was kind of an interesting uh, reaction. I think like virtually the final uh, second last shot of the movie or something, yeah. something like that. So um, talking about Walt's talking about, and there's a bit of chat back and forth uh, in the chat about pizza in yeah. that was mentioned. Uh, and to comment to DMG uh, and Walt, I don't think there is pizza was a post-war thing with the Italian war refugees. You know, I think the first reference to pizza uh, is like in the late 40s, early 50s mm -hmm. as a North American thing. Um, so, yeah. If you go to Melbourne in Australia, uh, Ligon Street is basically their version of Commercial Drive or Corridon Avenue with the Italian cafes. I think most cities have them, but it's called Ligon Street is, is where the first coffee machines, the first cappuccino, the first yeah. pizza, and that was all mid-50s. So that was, uh, you know... Yeah with the immigration of Italians. Um, Walt, that's a, yes. <laughs> yeah, I just say, I'm just agreeing what? with you, Jim. I'm like, sure. Well, you know, when you kind of stumble, you're like, kind of, yeah, what you said. <laughs> Walt, uh, mentions talking about the, uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the two soldiers deserting, uh, the other, <laughs> <laughs> the two that are left, <laughs> the three that are left, um, only four sh soldiers in the glider. Uh, uh, sh I'm sure budget, uh, but mm. they did actually do a decent enough job putting that cargo in a couple of the shots really close to give you the idea that that's 
it was a cargo flight with a couple of guys. <laughs> um, yeah. I would though one like again, there is a couple of moments in this film that I thought were good, uh, and could have been a great story po- point. Um, Hank Heck or Hank, oh, uh, the the yeah. Polish or the no, Polish the the Dutch, Dutch guy, mm-hmm. fly you know one of the soldiers, one of that little that little band of brothers, yep. <laughs> band of not brothers, him not getting in the boat. And uh, the way I read it was he's not getting in the boat because he just saw his colleague shoot a man in, in cold blood because mm-hmm. he's mad that he didn't handle the other situation well, which was a string of great moments that no matter what I thought about the characters, I was seized in that moment. And even the way Tom Felton's character, uh, the way he died, I thought that's the way those showdowns play out. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets nervous and shoots. They're both nervous, terrified, yell one yelling, one yelling in German, the other one in English like that. I was like, this is a nice tight little moment, you know, the, um, uh, and then coming back to just shoot the other guy down, totally bought it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I could see, you know, there's the Hank character, Hank character going, this is crazy. You know, he's mm-hmm. just like, you're nuts. And I, yeah. I think he no. actually says, doesn't he say, this is crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm quoting the character yeah. here. Yeah. And, and he does, he's like, yeah, I'm not, you know, and even, Will's reaction there where he's like, I really am on my own now. Like I I liked that. Like it's, you know, there, there is at least with Will's character, there is a somewhat believable arc over time. Yeah. You know, by the time he is there, he is, he couldn't quite, you know, like he's just, he's been beaten down by war, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it, it, which leads to the other great moment Although, again, a reason I don't like the character, and that may have been a real choice, but that Yana dying the death she did, you know? Um, Yeah. Truly alone, where even the one person she can see decides to look away. Yeah. You know, which is, I I mean, an understandable heart. Yeah, heartbreaking. Yes, that's Mm -hmm. it. You know, understandable, but at the same time, it's like, you know, yeah. So you, you, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, no. So you, well, I was just going to say that's actually one of the things I think this movie has going for it. You know, as we're, I'm sort of changing my mind. Well, we'll see at the end. But uh, technically, yeah, it's good. I got a list of things that irritated me about certain characters, but I uh, coming away from it, and I didn't mention it earlier because we weren't in the spoiler zone yet. When it ends. It doesn't feel like it's not like the end of the Breakfast Club with the the, the screenshot and the fist in the air. Mm-hmm. It's just a it just sort of slides into an ending, and it says this battle was fought in November forty four. Uh, if four thousand Germans, three thousand Allies, and two thousand civilians, yeah, uh, were ended up dying. By the way, two thousand civilians is a lot of civilians, <laughs> um, but. Uh, that, that were probably killed quite illegally, I'm sure. But, um, you know, outside of the scope of war. But Bomber um, Command decided to fly over finally. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> um, Which, part of the reason the Scheldt, it, like, it was so hard. Uh, although, and this is an interesting tidbit. Half the reason it was all flooded there is because the, the, uh, the, uh, the, it was uh, British bombers. I mean, and I shouldn't say British bombers. They're the ones who did it, but it wasn't like... It wasn't allied bombing, yeah. you know, is half the reason it was flooded. Um, you know. What such precision, uh, such a precision instrument, isn't it? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. um, but uh, but and then yeah, artillery would have finished off the rest. You know, so there was there was starvation. No... Yeah. Again, there... this is this is what I mean. Like, so for this time to be almost like clueless at the end, it's like. Yeah, I'm sure her father, they would have been like, maybe we should leave. Maybe we have enough credibility with the community because we have helped. You know, like everyone knew they could go to the doctor, Mm -hmm. you know, but you don't know. (laughs) It's like, yeah, 
Toyn, I think, would have been scared shitless. And yeah. kind of amazed that she hadn't been bombed to death because, you know, yeah, bombs are bombs and artillery are indiscriminate or like you said, precision weapons. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, I, so that's, you know, one of the things that I did like about it coming away from it. Jim, a uh, quick interruption. It's called The One Who Got Away. Got, yeah, I, I okay. wrote it down to, to pursue <laughs> that. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that. And thanks, uh, Vlad65 uh, yeah. there. Um, oh, speaking of Devil's Brigade, if you look, yeah. there's a shot where you could see Will's shoulder, and he actually had a, I think it said the Devil's Brigade of Canada uh, on his shoulder. Uh, no, it was Black uh, Watch. Oh, Black Watch. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Why do I have Which that? I don't believe was ever is on the shoulder flag. I think it's just the formal. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Like the Black Watch, I think, is the nickname of the. It may be allowed to be on their battle honors, but I don't know if it's allowed to yeah. be on the patch. I Devil's... did see a Fort Gary horse, my old regiment. Oh. I saw a Fort Gary horse cap badge and a black hatted because, yeah, and they, and they were, that is one of their battle honors is the Battle of the Scheldt um, oh. estuary. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, sorry. I wrote down Devil's Brigade after Walt had written it, but I did I did write down Black Watch there when I, I actually paused the movie. I'm like, okay, I wonder what that says, you know, if it's something Canadian, but uh, uh, Black Watch of Canada. And there was something else too, but I couldn't quite, it was a little bit blurry, uh, so close up. Yeah. Um, but overall, sort of the tonally, that's what I came away from. There was no real sense of victory. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, things had been won, but the cost was great and the cost to the individual characters was huge. Like they all just seemed mm -hmm. kind of the ones that emerged from it. The ones that lived seemed kind of stunned. And, and in terms of Marinus dying, the, the young Dutchman who had become a German soldier, I think he was done anyway. Like he, his character was killed mm -hmm. when he tried to save Tun, Toyn. Yeah. Um, but I can't see him living a, like he was so, he was kind of clueless, <laughs> number one, oh. but he was also kind of sh like, just kind of like, he almost couldn't react to anything. Uh, well, he was looking stunned a lot of the time. And uh, well, I think I, by that, like he was supposed to look burnt out, shell shocked, mm -hmm. PTSD, like almost like it. And maybe even a bit of character development. And then he's like, these children are dying here mm -hmm. and no one seems to care, you know, yeah. cause he saw, he saw the, that commander shoot that kid, that child soldier, mm -hmm. child soldier in the back. And there is a comment about, like he joined when he was 17, which is like criminal, you know, yeah. although something lauded about in all wars, about yeah. the kid who lied to go to war. And it's like, and the one, the, the one who did him a solid by kind of going, all right, come on in. <laughs> it's like, it's a 16 year old fucking boy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Way to go. Walt does uh, make a note. He says, not a lot of civilians dead compared to other theaters. Um, you know, sadly. Um, which, uh, yeah, I guess you got to kind of... Uh, but I think, Walt, what does come to mind, though, is this was already a pretty... It's a rural area with not a lot of people in it. You got to think that maybe that 2000 is like, well, there's half the town gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the plague went through, you mm -hmm. know, in one night. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that would be interesting to look at the demographics a bit more. Um, what did you. There was a, well, there's a couple of sort of war movie beats that I wanted to bring up. Um, okay. But. Uh, there was a I think they're story related or thematic. Yeah, story story related. Okay. So um, and and things that I sort of don't need to see anymore in movies. When she was looking for Tropes. the the yeah, uh, when she was looking for the map of the tides. I mean, people are looking for stuff in office buildings all the time, and yeah. and bam, you. I mean, yeah, you have to make it suspenseful. But how many? Like she's like, oh, I heard a, the the a squeaky wheel on a cart, you know, and, and, uh, woo. and she's just people, you know, people look for files in a filing room. Like I, I, yeah. I, that's kind of tired to me. The other one too, was the slow build up to the execution. Uh, it just is like, is this going anywhere? Is there going to be a twist? Uh, no, they're all just executed. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's great. And I know you have to show these things and, and, and part of it is the brutality, like showing the brutality, but 
you know, I've seen it in a lot of movies. The other one too is the. I think uh, they did that, Jim, in part to have that bit with the dad. Okay. Yeah. May have it just wasn't effective, uh, yeah. and I agree with you. Like it's sorry, but continue to your next trope. Uh, and then the other one was the all that Tired I mentioned before trope. was the all the all seeing bad guys the guest well whether or not he was Gestapo but the the, the intelligence the executioner guy. driving yeah. by in his uh, his uh, you know Hadric uh, <laughs> little convertible there and, yeah. and 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 you know with his binoculars directly on the two people in the street of a hundred people he's yeah. just staring right at the guy I mean come on. Yeah. That's that was a little much. Well, and you know what's interesting, Jim, also is that's all a bundle of yes. You bet the Germans straight up tortured that boy, you know, and uh-huh. that's a, that was a standard technique, you know. Um, but what was interesting is they keep falling into the this idea, and yeah, a lot a lot do break. I'm not saying that no one oh, yeah. breaks, but they currently, we, we all believe this thing the Americans sold us was that everyone, everyone breaks. We'll get them in the end. I think that's all part of the propaganda, part of torture propaganda, partly to say, don't worry, what we get out of torture is good, but partly to scare people who might be tortured and say, well, I want us to break now before they start pulling my fingernails out. Here's the thing. The Gestapo, truly one of the leaders in this area, and we have regular records of, like, you know what, uh, the, the so-called weakest of us all, women holding out for days and then dying under torture, saying nothing. Or finally, they just give up and ship them off to a concentration camp where they still manage to cause a bit of trouble before their, you know, tragic deaths. Like Mm -hmm. I, I, and that, I am sick of seeing that. I do want to see once in a while. It's like, I give up, blam, (laughs) you know, because motivated people can hold out. This isn't, I'm not saying this like a, but it, but it is. This is. It's yeah. a trope that everyone breaks. That oh, they're all tough at the beginning, and then they all fold at the end. Why? It's one of the one of the horrible reasons you don't do torture is partly. Well, how do you know? It's a, it could have been just five idiots, and everyone going, yeah, we could lose these assholes. I mean, absolutely, I'll go find those dipshits for you. I mean, <laughs> those terrible ter- terrorists. Like you, you can't trust what you get. Yeah the product of torture, but also this idea that it is all, no, it isn't, you know, heck when North American police do it and they do it, what do they get? False confessions, you know, you you know, I'm sick of that. I'm, I, and, and again, I was sick of the moment because this is supposed to be a big change moment. Oh my God, that he was in the East. And whatever they did in the West, they did tenfold in the East. Oh, yeah. You know, like it just the horror they visited on uh, the Ukraine, uh, Lithuania, like the Balkan, all those fucking countries. You know what? We may look at some of these places like shit shows now, which is terribly unfair. But so much of that can be drawn a straight line to what was going on there in like in World War Two, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and then further back, let's say Ukraine, Crimea, Crimea, this this, you know, where you fucking you had mentioned it on social media, what was going on with Stalin, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the Holodomor, you know, like, I mean, it's this is a area that has been traumatized generation after generation by some of the worst bastards on the planet ever. Yeah. Some of the goats of 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 human horror. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And but it's oh, when he sees the this kid back in Zealand. Wait a minute! It's all making sense now. I can't believe they're doing this. This makes my tum tum. It's like fuck off. I'm Come shocked. on, I'm shocked that this is going on in my. Again, yeah. but what a more interesting movie, Jim. If we had, okay, again, like, let's cut to where they started in war. Let's cut to when these three people were young and thought they knew everything. And 
thought that everything they were doing was great. And then cut to this moment where they all, where their stories come together in this one battle. Maybe they don't interconnect at all or just in passing where we see what it has done to them. Mm-hmm. That, and this is what I mean. I think there was a great movie under here. Mm-hmm. But like, it what the way because he was bound to this one movie uh, and he was then all of a sudden he's bound to a time frame where they all have to be innocents at the beginning and grow up at the end and it's like and we're only getting two days of what it was a six week campaign yeah you know yeah just it's it, it's putting too much on too time too tight a time frame I will though say uh, Jim before we get into the meaning. There was a moment uh, that leads it back to this, what could have been great and something you talked about. She is, so Marius has just survived, like got out with the skin of her teeth. The guy who saved her, uh, the guy to, in her mind, I, I can at least give her this much, who's only tried to do right by her do good for her, warn her about her brother. And, you know, like, I mean, you could, I'm not talking about a romantic feeling, but at least some kind of, I do know you. Connection, yeah. Dies in her hands after saving her life. There he is. Bill gets on, or Will's on the truck as they're driving away and she's walking and she's, of course, filthy now. Looks bedraggled. And that is like you see those pictures of those refugees as mm-hmm. they're walking down these streets uh, while soldiers are traveling wherever as the war continues. And that, that could have been a great movie. Focus on her. Here mm-hmm. is this image as she gets out and a guy sees her. And then we cut back to when she was far more innocent and for more like her dad wanting to get along and just do, just do her job. And, you know, that could have been my chef's kiss. Yeah. But no, nope, yeah. it's three of these stories almost like, uh, well, this, you know, the kid who plays Marius, probably a big star and yeah. <laughs> in Holland and the British, it's like, well, we won't talk about how part of our misery at the, near the end of the war was because of Mon- Monty, mm-hmm. because we want to maybe sell this movie in the British market. Yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Uh, Jamie Flatters, who plays Will, by the way, uh, going to be a part of Avatar two, three, and four <laughs> apparently. So <laughs> really, he's, he's a young man apparently on the rise if Avatar comes out or whatever is going on with that. I had a couple more story points before. He's got we get a on. good, he's got, he's a good actor. Like, a, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, I, he so sort of more... came, he sort of, once he got uh, mixed in with the Canadians and by the way, Bill, the Canadian played by the a Canadian Canuck. played the by a guy Canuck. named Robert Naylor from Quebec. So uh, yeah. <laughs> at least it's got, you know, gave a Canadian a role. Yeah. Um, uh, a couple more story points. One, uh, I was surprised because she's an attractive young woman. I was surprised that this didn't get a little more creepy. You know, you got a bunch of German soldiers in her. There was sort of an intimation of it at the very end, but I, he, I think the the guy who was no, he was pulling out his gun. Was pulling out his gun. Well, he, he said lay down, him. but I, yeah, it was it was not not all that. Yeah. But it didn't ever get that way, which is maybe not didn't get rapey. Didn't get rapey. Yeah, I was trying to avoid that word, but I guess that's the, the best word for it. <laughs> Probably not super honest, but also is a bit of a relief. Uh, and the other point, too, that the part that really uh, you're you're often t- talking about things that take you out of the movie. I didn't buy them being in waist deep water in Holland, in ocean water and not being cold. Like that's, uh, you know, for a Canadian, I don't know if, you know, if our American friends are watching at this point, it bugged me as much as the Naomi Watts at the top of the Empire State Building with King Kong. You couldn't even see your breath. It's Christmas time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 one of those things that the poor portrayal of cold like these guys would have been iced even even if it wasn't midwinter. They, they would have had 
hypothermia. You know, where uh, you're, you're shivering and the whole jaw just moves. And there was no, no. sense of that. Yeah. There was no yeah. sense of them being cold. And they were saw, and they're wearing wool outfits, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, you might well, as well. Mind you, wool work. does retain 40% of the heat it could wet, which is why they were forever wearing wool. Yeah. Why yeah, wool was such so. a big deal in uh, the Navy? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a good point. But that's what uh, I was taught in cadets. <laughs> I, I tend not to wear my any paramilitary role. military education wasn't for nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, yeah. So the the cold thing drove me crazy again. Um, yeah. So that's yeah. that's uh, another couple points I wanted to, to make. Yeah. Uh, it, interesting. Walt does on the sexual assault, the potential for sexual assault. Uh, he he agrees with you. I was expecting it too. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure though, here's the thing that what I was already taken out of that because once they're getting on the truck, it wasn't, you know what I, you know what I could really do while we're all just running from, cause we really are invaded now. We are losing rape. <laughs> Yeah. No, I think you'd say get on the truck. Oh, we forgot that girl. Screw it. Get on the truck. Yeah. What would have happened was as they were evacuating, go shoot the, go shoot the prisoner. Or go, get, you know, like yeah. there the the Germans' interest in dragging along the prisoners, making sure that you know evacuating camps and pushing them forward, like I, it blew my mind. But they would have at least shot her. I thought she would have been done for. But by yeah. that point, the oh no, the, he doesn't even say wait for me. I just got one bit of business, or I've got some raping to do, or yeah. or. Like he does it. And so I was just, I was already out of the scene. I was like you guys, but I, uh, that I thought it was going to happen, but then he was going to shoot her. I got to admit, I was relieved. Um, partly it's just, yeah, I just, I don't want to see that. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. want to see, you know what? Oh yeah. It this didn't wreck it for just me. been a bunch yeah. of brutalizing anyway. Yeah. I don't, we don't, you know what? That we haven't gone there, that we wait to the end to go there. It's like, fuck you. It's just, yeah. What are you trying to, oh, you know what? We haven't assaulted any of the, <laughs> we have not assaulted any of our female characters yet. Yeah. People might think that that doesn't happen in war. Let's make sure they understand it does, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so I was okay. Yeah, yeah. Didn't miss it. I do like putting up all of uh dmg's football updates i think he's referring to the football game and not the yeah movie. yeah that's that's, ex <laughs> that's exactly it i, I didn't say football yes i think they fumbled references. the plot <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say fumble re football references i'm like yeah he's watching a football game as he's watching us that's wait awesome a minute. <laughs> wait a minute uh okay let's jim mm -hmm. before we get into meaning why don't sure. we take a moment and let's Let's talk about what we're watching next week. Oh, already? Um, yeah. What the heck? Yes, I had to remind done. myself because it was. Uh, I was like, "Oh my God, what are we uh, watching next week?" Well, we're going <laughs> back to uh, going back to the well. Uh, another one that's well, one that's creating buzz. Uh, and we are. You got the graphic ready? I may. <laughs> oh, we are watching a new movie. In theaters, called uh, a little independent movie called Dune. <laughs> I love the, uh, I love the, the 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 font that they use. That that that's really sharp. Very... As long as you know that it's Dune, I mean. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it used to be that almost every um, uh, almost every movie had its own font. It seemed. I don't know if that was the practice. And of course, there's the great Saturday, the practice. Saturday Night Live film that that asks the question: Why did Avatar use the bamboo font? For, <laughs> <laughs> with the, Ryan Gosling as the guy who's tortured about the decision, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there were the, the there's a San Diego cold case YouTube channel, and they use the same font too. So I'm thinking, yeah. well, but uh, it, yeah, there's an interesting, and you might find it on YouTube as a cut up. But there's a great documentary floating out there. Can't remember the title about movie posters and how those oh, yeah. have changed. And I know there's a, and this I think I'll be able to look up, a uh, great thing about titling fonts. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was computers in the 80s and 90s. But before that, always designed by 
people who knew, like who designed titles yeah. for films and all um, before the advent of what used to be called when we were young men, Jim, desktop publishing. Before yes. that, all posters were specialists in graphic design, all the type styles they designed them. Like it wasn't like they were just taking something out of a letter set box and, yeah, no. you know, they would design at least the big title of the piece and, you know, a lot of the stars and that. And then, you know, the, the shtick on the bottom, the, the credit block, uh, that would be, yeah, um, that would standard. be, you know, letter set or whatever, but yeah. It, yeah. And I, I find that fascinating. And we're every now and then we see that a bit of a throwback to that time when they're like, no, we should design something. Yes. Um, uh, interesting you mentioned that, Jim. You know what I watched the other day just as a rewatch? Because I thought I'd have to boycott, start boycotting streaming oh, yeah. services because of the potential of a strike. And I'm like, well, I might as well watch. Uh, and I watched a throwback. Uh, the Ben Stiller version of the, uh, uh, the Life of Walter Mitty. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that... The way it does its title sequence, although it's all type styles that you could probably find, like the way it does it, the title sequence, the way they build titles into the story, into mm. those first few scenes is just mwah, chef's yeah. kiss, chef's kiss stuff. I'll have to uh, watch that again. It's yeah, one of my it, daughter's favorite movies. I, I, one of those movies that doesn't, in my opinion, like it was not lauded at the time but mm. i think it deserves it deserves more praise than it gets you know mm -hmm. um anyway let's uh let's get to the meaning what do you think he like you know jim i my list of you know i i did kind of you know there's there's these themes of loyalty idealism mm -hmm. You know, like, because even the Dirk kid, you know, throws the throws the throws his camera that somehow he's wandering around with like an idiot. Uh, trust. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think all those are there. But what do you what do you think the director is trying to? What do you think he was trying to say? You know, there was there's a couple interesting choices that uh, some of the characters made, and and for Toyn to not want to give the resistance the pictures unless they helped with her brother, like break him out of prison or or whatever. That was kind of an interesting thing, right? And and that was that it was, yeah. um, you know, it was a bit of a selfish move, but I, I must admit that I hadn't seen that before nor did i expect it uh it was kind of an interesting character motivation so uh in terms of meaning aside you know i think most pragmatically it's to cover what happened the original title in dutch is de slag und de schelt or something like that but to cover that as well as they could that action i think that's that's sort of you know uh to 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 bridge that gap or to you know put a movie where there hadn't been a movie before i think sometimes that's the point of some of these war movies is to like what haven't they covered right but but what have you learned about that battle like if i hadn't given all the backstory if you haven't read anything about it yeah. what would you have learned you know i think that is yeah that that's like it's almost like a and you could have, Jim, don't have yeah. the battle at all and talk about the forget the forgotten battle. And maybe there's the this is the double entendre of the title is mm. it's about the forget the forgotten day to day battles. Um, yeah, the point, yeah. you know, the 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 pointless act of bravado that leads to all these terrible knock on effects, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the the battle of a father, a doctor, just trying to get his family through this. Don't cause too many waves. Take care of the Germans. Take care of my own. Take care of my community. 
you know, do my do my duty as my the Hippocratic oath. Like, I mean, there's many little battles in here, point, you know. Yeah. So, because yeah, we didn't, you know, I learned about the Scheldt, the that battle and Canada's involvement because <laughs> of research. Yes, <laughs> not because yeah. of this fucking movie. Yeah. You would not know, you know. You would think well, the British were leading it. There was that map at the you start know? with the <laughs> the with the uh, the uh, time traveling Canadian flag uh, at yeah. the very start, uh, but. Um, you know, trust, I guess, out of all those, trust is sort of a big one. You know, like the friends didn't trust Toyn and uh, the brother didn't trust Toyn and, and the father, the doctor trusted, you know, the honor of the Germans too much, you know, and, and, and on and yeah. on and on. Um, you know, there's, I'm just trying to think of some of the family dynamics. There's almost no mothers in the movie. <laughs> like there's a lot of... We see what? one, the hus yeah. the wife of the mayor, because mm -hmm. the Germans have taken his kid. But you see the English uh, hotshot Will and his dad. You don't see a mom. Mm -hmm. I think nope. they might might have mentioned. They her, refer but... to her as your mother. Uh, your mother will be happier that you're on the ground. Yes, that's right too. Yeah, yeah. So but you could be just listen. You, you we're not trusting you with a plane, not even a glider. Yeah, glider. <laughs> you're going. You're you're off to the army, boy. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know there are a million ways you could take care of that idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I'd say maybe. Uh, I'd say trust was sort of a big one. Um, uh, and the ways that it can sort of bend back on you, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't trust the toy. So yeah. that affected her. Like she was yeah. pretty, she was pretty put out. Of, well, not just put out about it, but, and the, the father, you know, his trust in the honor system that worked against him as well. Yeah. So, you know, is I guess it was about sort of the, some of the some of the aspects of trust that can sort of, you know, well, it's, bounce, yeah, bounce back at you. Well, and in the end, like the what could have been a great movie <laughs> mm -hmm. if it would focus again on her and her dealings with the, um, her dealings with the Dutch resistance. And them basically going much like the because like I mean they're kind of a, the other side of the German commander coin, mm -hmm. you know the yeah sure uh, you do something for us uh, yeah maybe we'll try and save him like he mm -hmm. doesn't even say it he plays a game even harder core he doesn't even say it I was it would, in the scene I'm like you should have got that in writing because I don't think he's gonna do shit she didn't yeah. even get him to say yeah you will I need to hear you say it. Mm -hmm. You know, so she can observe the games the German is playing on her dad. But, you know, um, but that could have been a really cool movie to talk about that, the, those games that were being played, because I'm sure that happened a lot. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure there was cold hearted moves, um, much like in Rogue One, <laughs> a Star Wars story, wow. but cold, colder hearted. <laughs> colder hearted moves where people where they're like, well, we don't trust you. You work for the Germans. Your dad's pretty, I'm sorry. He's cordial, yeah. cozy, like different perspectives. Right. But yeah, uh, yeah it's like, uh, so we're going to help her get her brother. We're not going to be able to get him out of that fortress. He's fucking dead. No, what no. we can do is this, like you can hear the rationalizations mm -hmm. just as the, you know, you could have even the German officer could have looked a little more sympathetic if they said, yeah, I, you know what? I'm barely holding on to my own men and their morale. If they know I put the fix in at this point, That's I'm not going to be know. able to, you know, but they don't do that. Oh, ah, you were 17. You, you made an adult decision. <laughs> like, Cause again, I, I, I expect earlier in the war, you know, the local who big shots could have gotten the fix in for the kid. Mm -hmm. You know, he would have been put not put on a train or, you know, like he, he, he would, his life wouldn't have been wonderful afterwards, but I suspect they could have, because, you know, there's always that, well, you know, we kind of need this doctor. We need the mayor. We, you know, we're just trying to keep everyone on side. Why did they kill Heydrich? Why did they kill Heydrich? It wasn't because he was a bastard. It was because he was actually a pretty effective local governor who was co-opting the locals. You know, and it was like, 
if we kill them, the Germans will overreact and then we'll have our people back on side, you know? Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, there's, and I think that goes to the themes I think the filmmaker was trying to get at. Like, because that, that we can think of them, that there was enough scene, enough scenery that we're like kind of going, that's a cool moment that could have, like, again, you could have started with her. I do like the book ending, the flash forward flashback thing. You know, the moment as she's just walking out of the house, we don't know much about her. And mm-hmm. there she is kind of bedraggled. Mm-hmm. And just looking like at some poor refugee and we don't know how she got there. Yeah. And yeah. then we see all these things about loyalty. Who is she loyal to? Her family, definitely. Her brother. Her mm. that's her that's her loyalty. You know? So her good friend is like, I know I know you. I don't need to put you under that kind of you know. Yeah. Why? Yeah. You'd never be supportive and then we'd have to worry about you. Yeah, you yeah. don't want us worrying about you, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. And the, the the other thing too, I do think is, and I mentioned it before. I don't know why I didn't mention it earlier, but that the the notion of uh, the cost of war uh, is kind of a big one. But yeah, this one did not, and it to me this felt different. And I think one of the the um, one of the advantages of this movie is that it didn't feel like an American raw raw not that those are really made these days but it didn't feel like an american or can, canadian or even an english just any kind of any, point any of view kind of raw of, raw film you're, yeah. you're absolutely right yeah, yeah and it, it wasn't didn't, and it, pro war wasn't glory the glory no, of combat no no and and everyone came away just you know they they didn't obviously have ptsd uh, as a, as an expression or acronym at the no. time but you know, you can see everyone's going to need some counseling, uh, virtually all the leads here. Right. And, and uh, they're all made less by the experience. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Bill, Bill I would grows say up in that terror. Oh yeah. Go ahead. I, I do. I would just say that that's, that's probably, I mean, it, it, you don't know until the end that this is, you know, what it is, but I think that, to me, that's a, a, a big difference from this is that sort of, it just slides into the end titles, right? It just, it, there's a, there's a sort of a crane shot. It shows yeah. the, the, the people moving out of town or moving about the town. And then it just fades to black and there's no, there's no like, well, we did it. No high fives, no Chuck Norris ending. You know, it's just, no, not that there would be, but you know, yeah. it's just, it's, that's it. Yeah. I would say though, Jim, that there is a, this isn't that unique actually anymore. Yeah. I'm even thinking of Fury, uh, that tank one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the Germans lose and the Allies win, but it's still kind of uh, these poor, miserable bastards and the just the, the shitty hell they're going through. Yeah, the moments yeah. of peace and poignancy, even saving Private Ryan, you know, mm-hmm. coming across uh, like in that. Uh, there, there's more mercy in it and the consequences of mercy. Mm-hmm. Um, here we don't see that as much the, uh, but yeah, I think I, I, it is a great Dutch example of that mm-hmm. and that it puts the Dutch experience. Like you and I talked about this when we were first talking about the film and it's like, looks like it puts the resistance at the lead and I get it. It's a Dutch film, but it's still got Canada in it. Um, you know, that it puts that Dutch lived experience at the forefront, mm. maybe not as realistic a one as I think it could have been, but better than, better than just happy Dutch. Be, yay. We've been, <laughs> yeah. we, we've been relieved. Uh, we've been liberated. The, uh, what I was half expecting when I was first pitched you the movie, Jim, and I think this is kind of what you're talking about. I have expected, oh, like some daring do, you know, these, oh, yeah, these yeah. plucky, plucky resistance fighters learning something, getting that information to the Canadians and saving it at last moment. And it's like, no, it 
got there like so much information goes. It's like, well, okay, if this is true, yesterday sucked. Maybe we'll try this idea. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, uh, which feels more real, you know. But I did. I thought there'd be daring do. This was not that. And yeah. That was... Very low on the swashbuckle meter. <laughs> you know, <there's... laughs> yeah. You know, there's no swinging on a rope. But, uh, yeah. Jelly Duck uh, just uh, chimed in. Yes. Good to see you, Ahmed. <laughs> I will. Um, Ahmed, it, it's interesting you point that out. He says, of the visuals about Private Ryan, Ryan is pretty good. Yeah, and we found these very similar, Ahmed. Not super flashy or colorful. I will say this, though, Jim. I would love color to return to these movies. Not saying that it has to be go to the other extreme, yeah. but I am getting sick of the gray. I yeah. want to see, yeah. like it's taking care, it's taken over so many films that it just becomes this, you know, I want a little pop. I want a little, and it, no, it doesn't have to be a gushing flow of blood, yeah. but I'd like some color. These people lived in color as best as they could. They had color in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, we're almost like, uh, we're, you know, as people at times used to think of the past in black and white, because that's the only films they have. Now the thing about the, you know, they really never had any colors that popped, <laughs> yeah, you know? And yeah. I'm like, that's not true. I want to see a little more realistic, n truly naturalistic cinematography. I would like to see that, but... There's That's actually, and, there's and, a, and very little to do, very little to do with the meaning, actually. <laughs> there's a uh, colorist on Twitter and she takes old black and white movies and painstakingly uh, oh. uh, 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 pictures, uh, historical pictures. And she painstakingly adds color to them. Marina yeah. Amaral, I think her name is. I think she's Brazilian, but she, she has a book out called The World on Fire, I believe. And she's taken all these sort of old you know, uh, harrowing photos and some not harrowing, uh, of, uh, you know, black and white days, olden times, colored them all often crowds of people and she'll, she'll color every one. And it's, uh, the effect is quite, quite amazing. Yeah. Very it's, cool. it's, it's like Peter Jackson slowing down the, the, the old movies of the old yeah. soldiers to make them a little more realistic. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, w I want to, uh, first of all, uh, Ahmed, no, Paul, all good, brother. Happy you popped in. Understand that you're, you know, we, we got a time zone difference. Our, you know what? Our audience is small, but it is global. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we just appreciate you here. Um, I did now, um, before we, we do have to wrap up, we've only got five and a half minutes left. Uh, but uh, Walt says, how did this compare to Soldier of Orange, which I have yet to see? I have yet to see it, so I, have yet I to could see not it tell you. Oh, well, something to put on a list. We're all in the same boat. Now, DMG, and this is something you and I will talk about afterwards, but he's bringing up Squid Game. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, so I'm going to put, I'm going to acknowledge uh, DMG's question here, but maybe we'll defer and talk, maybe we'll talk a little bit about Squid Game next week. Um all right, Jim, I do think we gotta we gotta rush through your last couple of moments here. Sure. Um director. Pass or fail? Uh, you know, I, I'd say sort of technically pass. Uh he's not really responsible for the story. Though uh I, I well, yeah, he is. Well like I, his, in terms of the sorry, movie. in terms of the screenplay, yeah. <sighs> it's, yeah, I it is his, yeah. You know, I'd say, you know, technically, yeah. Story wise, no. So I, I think mm -hmm. I'd, I'd say fail, probably. Yeah. And not enough Canadians. <laughs> Nowhere near enough Canadians. Yes. And and the, the Canuck. I don't. I I I. Not even that. That that's anachronistic. I don't think anyone like that's something that almost a a tourist bureau came up with but i don't think that was a regular thing ever said about that we said about ourselves you know that that was a label for that somebody else used on us mm -hmm. you know um but 
not a hundred percent sure on that. Uh, okay. We've got, um, uh, for myself, I, I kind of see what you're trying to say, Jim. I, I would say it's a fail. It's not an effective movie. He's, yeah, it does it have a beginning, middle, and end? Like it's it's not a fail like F. Yeah. It's it's a D. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a D. You technically you do know how to have a beginning, middle, and end of a story. Mm-hmm. You uh, you shot it. <laughs> com- you had it shot competently. Yeah. You know, there were moments like real like heartfelt moments, heartbreaking moments. Mm. I think though in the development, it could have been a, you know, like so many other directors, uh, thank you very much for the script. I have a guy who's going to look at this for us now, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, because this, I'm not shooting that <laughs> like so many directors have done and will continue to do. Uh, but yeah, I think this could have been, this is one of those where it's like, they should have had a story meeting and went, Let's just pick one of these folks. The other two we can still have, but they're going to get shrunk down. They're going to be supporting cast. Uh, Meanwhile, <laughs> but let's pick one and we're going to make it all about that character so that all of a sudden you got a lot more room and a lot more time. Uh, temporal and, you know, give us a bit of a backstory, you know, like, why not start it at the beginning of the war, a little snapshots leading up to the battle of the Scheldt, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the excuse for why we're all here or even just not have, this was just before all these forgotten battles happened before a forgotten battle, mm-hmm. but you know, and then it's like, okay. And then the Canadians rolled in and stuff happened. I would have totally respected that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm with you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm giving this, uh, Matthias, a fail as well. All right. Um, any final thoughts? What are your final thoughts, Mr. Trulico? Here's my final thoughts is that I, this is more of a sort of a philosophical question, but this had one of the highest budgets of any Dutch movie next to something called the black book, which is another war movie. And I, I'm thinking, you know, uh, it's something sort of, I think it had a little more actual, um, daring do. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm I'm unfamiliar with that. I, I I looked at you know I just looked at it long enough to sort of see what it was about, but um, I, I sort of wonder, and and I don't. This isn't a. I'm not phrasing this question to be mean, but I'm thinking, how is it that you know you have a country of several hundred years old uh, of of you know an old country, an old European country, and two of your most expensive films are about the war. How do, what does that say about the country uh, itself? Uh, you know, th- there's clearly other things going on in, in, in the Netherlands, uh, but uh, great ultimately, infrastructure. Are, are, is Western Europe still defined by World War II uh, that much? Uh, that's just sort of what, just sort of throwing that idea out there. It could, it could be yes, could be no. Uh, you know what? That's a great, it's a great question. Like it, it certainly could be it, but it could also be that war movies are expensive. Like yeah, first of yeah, all, that's... they're period mm-hmm. and period movies are expensive. Yeah. Second war. So all of a sudden you got to have, even on a cheap one, you still have to have a lot of extras. So it could mm-hmm. literally be, um, yeah, it could also be that because of war movies, they can sell overseas. Otherwise, mm-hmm. everything else. Oh no, this is all local product. We don't have to spend shit on this. Yeah. Everyone will watch it. Everyone will know our little weird office take. You know, coffee, yeah. coffee shop comedy or whatever. You know, but yeah, it could very well be that too, Jim. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, more comedy from DMG. Ugh. <laughs> There's a groaner. Well, man, maybe although. He does make a point about uh, splitting the cost with Canada. It was a co-production. Maybe oh, it was a it? co-production. Yeah, with uh, uh, Belgium. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but uh, maybe, maybe Jim, <laughs> if it was with Canada, there'd actually be Canadians in it. Well, I, yeah, you see, you get this Robert Naylor guy. <laughs> that's that's it. And some yeah. donuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, especially, you know what? The commander of that whole effort 
actually has got a fascinating story. Uh, Simmond, um, you know, one of the youngest chiefs of staff ever, uh, had a lot to do with the post-war Canadian Armed Forces, uh, both the drawdown and then the massive rebuild for the Korean War, the Korean conflict. Mm-hmm. So there is uh, there is uh, stuff in there. All right, yeah. folks. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's say goodbye to our wonderful our wonderful community. Of course, uh, DMG. Good to see you, here, man. Um, see Walt, thank you very much. Um, oh, look at this! At the end, <laughs> after a couple of hours of lurking, like Curtis some kind Judd. of cool guy. <laughs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> hey, everybody! Oh, he's started. out here already. <laughs> look, the the time between those two things is sixteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! He he walks in the front door, grabs a couple hors d'oeuvres, he's out the back door. He's got his proof of attendance. Yes, that's, that's the way these guys roll. Uh, it's great. See, thanks for uh, popping by, and thanks for thanks for listening in, and thanks for uh, saying hello, Curtis. Yes, uh, yes. Of course, uh, Walt. Uh, thank you very much, and again, uh, congratulations on your wonderful success. Can't <laughs> wait until you hit that one thousand. Even though I'm also seething with envy inside. Um, <laughs> uh, who else do we got here? Let's. Uh, oh. Ahmed Jelly Duck, thank you very much for for popping in, yeah, uh, especially on a work day. We do appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, Catherine, uh, thank yes. you very much uh, for coming in. And yeah, thanks for the Passchendaele reference. I may still not have seen that movie. I don't think I have. Yeah, you haven't. Which okay. is, yeah. I haven't, which is terrible. Or I'm going to watch it and then go, oh wait, I have seen this and. I forgot about it because it's not that good. As we know from Ted Lasso, Dutch people are very uh, honest. So I'm going to say, <laughs> Rob, that makes you a horrible Canadian. No, it just makes me a, a lazy Canadian. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you are very lazy. <laughs> Jan He's Mas. not being rude. He's, <laughs> You're it's movie watching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your movie watching has much to much to uh, to be desired. Leaves much to be desired. Uh, okay. Anyway, everybody, thank you all very very much. Oh look look at this. DMG, wow. you are the man. Which bar? <laughs> I want to know what Las Vegas bar we're in. <laughs> oh, we do. Hopefully, we'll, are we going to get that answer? His, his battery's dying. Uh-oh. I don't think we're getting that answer. We can answer. talk to him later. We can. We'll put a little map in it. This is where <laughs> we were watched. Yes, that would be cool. Vegas, baby. All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, Copper Keg. Hello, Copper Keg. Okay, I'm looking that up. <laughs> That's awesome. Me yeah, too. pin. <laughs> we should have like our little global map. Where has Jim and Rob overanalyzed movies yes, been watched? Yeah. The Copper Keg. That's Tip your waitress. Cool. <laughs> Ooh, good one. All right, my friends. Thank you all very much. Uh, yeah, Jim and I are going to, we're going to let you go now. Come back next week. We, Jim and I may even go see the movie in a theater and then come talk to you about it. But that, uh, again, 930 Central Daylight Time, uh, UTC minus five, Sunday, August, uh, August 20, no, August, October 24th. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's just fantastic. And, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to say, see you all. See you. Good night, see Vegas. Ya. <laughs> oh my goodness let's cue those let's get those credit oh there we go the credit